Hey there, welcome to My Animal House. We're down here in the hide and bang. I got another video. We're over here at the rodent rack. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how I take care of my rodents. I breed mice and African soft fur rats. I'm going to show you how I set up my tubs and how I get them going, some of the things I do and don't do with my rodents. So we're going to get to that right away, but there's a couple of announcements I want to make. And first is I just want to talk about my live stream every Tuesday at 5 o'clock. It's live at 5 and uh, it's specific tangent, standard time, basically YouTube time. It's all about animals. I take care of my animals during the live stream. I take care of my snakes and my ro rodents. I clean and that kind of thing. And there's all kinds of people, animal related people in the chat or just people who support animals and animal people in general, keepers and breeders. So I invite anybody to that live stream. You're more than welcome to ask questions and that kind of thing. If you have a question about your red reptile, rodents, or any of that kind of stuff, just go ahead and ask. Maybe somebody will be able to help you. And the second announcement is, bang, these new shirts. I got a new style. They're silk screened by some professionals that know what they're doing. And um, my old shirt was good. I like it, and I'll still make those, but this shirt is awesome. And I am going to offer these shirts on Instagram for $25 shipped in the U.S. I can usually ship a shirt for about five or six bucks. So anywhere in the U.S., um, please hit me up on Instagram. Anywhere outside of the U.S., you got to get a hold of me, and we can talk shipping. Because the last time I shipped a shirt to Canada it was like 20 bucks so if you're willing to ship you know pay the shipping we can work out figure out what it is you're more than welcome to order a shirt as well but um, anybody in the US get a hold of me down on Instagram it's $25 ship and it's the new design we'll get them out I have sizes from small to double extra large so if you're interested in one of these shirts get a hold of me there on Instagram and if you're new here to the hide in the channel please consider liking and subscribing to the channel hitting that uh, notification bell so you won't miss the lives or any of my other content and we'll get down to this road video thanks for watching up till here let's get on with it thanks all right everybody why well, i got you here with this dirty tub before we get to the cleaning part of this i know is how i set up the tub but i wanted to go over this tip real quick um right now i i don't see anything but i want to explain why but um here under here oh look at that we got some babies you see how these little guys watch this check it out there's bunch of them in there let me see the one right there there's one right there. And then um, another tip, just to make sure, is what I was just saying, is to make sure you catch all these little guys. And, and here, let me show you one. And I don't have the glove on because of, um, because of the, the touch of the little babies or nothing. I, we've had many litters here at my animal house. But the reason why is, is that i got to sift through here, and I don't want to touch all the poop and all that kind of stuff to get all these little munchkins out of here. There's a ton of them. So, one, two, three, four, five. I think that's how many there was. Yep. So all I found, but is what I do is I'll go through and, and I'll knock around the substrate. That's why I got the glove on right now. Is um, I'll knock around anywhere where there's like when it's really compact and tight, you don't have to worry about it as much. Just check any loose spots because is what they'll do sometimes is they'll put a couple babies over to the side. They'll put them up here in the front or something like that, and they'll hide like two babies, and they'll keep bunch back here. And they're hoping like a predator comes in, and they'll find these two, and they have time to escape with these ones, so more of them will survive. I know it sounds bad, but that's how nature works. It's true. And they're, they're, it's almost like a little false nest. It's like, oh, they're hoping you'll find that one, and then they have time to escape. So always make sure when you're going to clean your tubs and stuff, any of the loose substrate. You, like I said, if it's really compact, there's not going to be any in there. But just make sure to check around in the loose substrate to make sure you don't have any stray babies. Because you know you don't want to you know you don't want to think that there's nothing in there and miss one and you know and miss out on the opportunity of having one. So uh, that's just a good little tip. I'll transfer these little guys and we'll get them going. And then and until then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get this tub clean. So here we go. All right, everybody. Here we go. This is my small time operation. I'm just a small time breeder as far as the mice and the rats. It's all basically the same pretty much throughout the rodents as far as their care. And, and, but people vary on how they do it and what they do. So I, I do have some snakes. I'm hoping to breed them someday. And the rodents are the reason why, I, you know, I have the rodents is because of the snakes. So the two sizes that I have here, or the um, this is the FB20, and I use this basically for mice. It's the shallower tub. You know, you don't want it to be too deep for the mice because then they can't reach up for the water and that kind of thing in the food. So the deeper one is for like rats and that kind of thing. And you probably run um, African software rats in here too. So, you know, because they're kind of a stubbier rat. They don't get as big as a Norway. But this is just one of the sizes that I use. This tub's happening to be empty right now. But this is the one that everybody uses or most people use and 
DIY projects. Lowe's changed their tub a little bit, and I think I'll actually even make make a rack using their tub maybe just to get the the video up on the channel. So if you're interested in how to um, to get a rack, um, Home Depot still sells these, and you can get them online. So if you are interested in a rodent rack build, I do have a video. I'll put it up on the screen right now, bang, or up in that the little description up there. If you click there, it'll go straight to that video. So we'll get on to this. The first thing that I do, and, and these tubs are pretty basic it, it, around the, the reptile industry as far as when you breed your rodents. So uh, this is the one we use. The first thing that I do is I use the cleaner. I usually wash them outside, you know, in between each use. But after after I wash them outside, I disinfect them with some chlorhexidine, I think it's called. This is what I use. And I think it's a half a cup of this per gallon of water is what I do. Is what was recommended just, to, you know, for cleaning basic purposes and that kind of stuff. So you just disinfect it and uh, clean it all away. I just use paper towel. Sometimes I'll use a, a, a kind of like an old rag or something to kind of clean them out. But just make sure to get it all good and disinfected and clean. Because, you know, this, normally you're in between. This is a fairly new tub for the, for the video. But it's the same process because you just want to make sure it's disinfected in between each clean. And you can use F6 as well, I think, or F10, F10, excuse me, is what it's called. And I'll put a link down in the description on how, uh, through Amazon, on where to find the chlorhexidine that I use. And, and I'll put a link in there for the F10 too. So uh, they're both cleaning and disinfecting products of the um, veterinary industry and that kind of thing. And, and there's something that you should have if you do have a reptile or rodent operation going on. So I'll put them links in there. And now is what I do after this. As soon as I get the tub clean, it's basically the same thing for the rats as far as the my African software rats and the mice. I do the same setup. I use a pine bedding or a pine pellet on the bottom. You don't have to use this. Some people don't. Some people say it's useless. Some people say, you know, it works great. I do. I think if you, if your tubs, it depends on how many rodents you have in there. If I had a li light amount of rodents, you probably wouldn't need them. But if you had a heavy amount of rodents, they are very useful. So uh, we'll get into that. I'll put them in there and uh, we'll get on with this video. All right, these are the pine pellets I use. You can get them in all kinds of different, like barn places and co-ops and that kind of thing. It's just called a barn dry, I guess they call it. It's just a hard pellet. And when it does get moist, it'll swell up to about 10, 12 times that size or something. They get really big. So this is this is what I use, and this is the base for what I put in my rats and my mice bowl. All right, everybody, now that we got our pine pellets in there, you, like I said, you could use these as you want. It's up to you. This is just what I do. This is what I do to take care of the animals. The, the channel itself basically helps me pay for all of the care for the rodents. So it is you, the people that click on this video, that help me pay for the care of these rodents. So I'm not going to go the cheapest route as I can. I could get cheaper substrate or not use this, but it's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to use what I think is right. And, you know, I'm not going to go overboard, but I'm going to use, you know, within reason of what I think is going to be the healthier uh, decision for them. And is what I'm going to use right now for substrate. And I do use two kinds of substrate. I do use the pine chips, and I will talk about that here in a minute. But this right here is aspen. I just use an old, uh, it usually comes in the, the, the condensed containers and stuff. So I'll put a bunch in here and break it all up and that kind of stuff. And this is the aspen bedding. And I use this for any of the mom, any of the tubs that have moms in their breeder moms or any of that, that are going to basically have babies. And I'll get some substrate in here, and, and we'll talk about why I use this now and, and not the not the other Ooh, i split some but it's all good yeah let me get some see all that dust that's the one part i don't like about any of the bedding you get a bunch of dust i usually do this during my live streams and that kind of thing but today I'll just kind of go over what we're doing here. 
All right, now that we're back to here, and, and this aspen is kind of dusty, I understand, and uh, the big chip pine isn't as probably dusty as this stuff, but um, I have my ups and downs. I do use, like I said, I, I'm not going to use it in this video because it's just one or the other, and you can find it, like I said, at all co-ops. Walmart sells a bunch of different pine and, and aspen products and that kind of thing, but um, you only want to use so many. I wouldn't use any other kind of that uh, seed or any of that kind of stuff is really bad for them. It's toxic, that kind of thing, so don't use that. So this is dusty, and I do put about two, three inches of um, substrate in there to where they, they'll move it around and cause all kind of trouble for themselves. But is what I do is in, when I, once I get all the in here right here and the dust settles down a little bit, I just grab a water bottle. You can buy these at like any hardware store for like 10 bucks. These give it a little pressure, and I squirt it all down, even the sides. I just give it a good shot real quick. A lot of people don't do this. I kind of mix up the top a little bit, too. I kind of do this number. And I just kind of mix it up. It does kind of make it a little bit of a mess. It's no big deal. You know, it's going to take a little couple minutes for the rats to get in there anyway. But the reason why I do this, and, take off my hand a little bit, and the reason why is because of all the sides, is what I do is I wipe them all down after I get them wet. To where it eliminates a lot of the dust. Because the, the, a lot of the dust that they create when you do change their tubs is when you first get them in there and they rearrange it. So if you could knock all this dust off of the sides and you get the, you know, get the... The basic bed, you know, not moist or anything like that. Just kind of shoot it down to where when they get in there, the it's not going to create as much dust when they're running around to begin with, and then you know it doesn't it doesn't cause any eye infections because if you get too much dust in your in your rodent bins and that kind of stuff, it can cause eye irritation and infections and kind of weird stuff. So this is what I do to help prevent that. You know, it works for me. I just give them a good wipe down, and it's all you know. Now you can do it, and it's not all dusty and crazy, and it'll dry a little bit. It's not like. It's not sticking in my hands. It's not like it's over wet or nothing. And it'll dry fast in this room anyway. All right. So then we'll go on to a couple of other things that I do. And, um, which is, and remember too, these, a lot of these bins right here. I don't know how well you can see it in the video. Let me check. Yep, they have these keyholes right here. I do have a video on how to fix this, uh, put some wire over this keyhole without any sharp edges or nothing. I kind of poke the tines through. It's in the video. It shows it, and I'll put it up, um, up in the right-hand side there. It'll, a little link will pop up, and you can click to go check out how I fix that as well. So now is what I do. And like I said, the pine is the same way. When I put it in there, I squirt everything down, wipe it all down, same way. And then now I just, uh, I just use some Timothy hay. You can use whatever you want. I just get it on a big old clump full. I do it in the mice, the grow outs. I do it in all the bins. But I just give them a big old pile. If they eat any of this, it's just amazing for fiber and that kind of thing for them. All right, now that I got my hay set up and that kind of thing, all I need now is just basically a hide in this this this, this bin. All right, right, let's talk about these hides a little bit. I get to these little bowls from the dollar store in the pet section, and then I just use the old soldering gun and I just melt out a little hole for them. They'll chew the size hole that they want anyway. You can even have to put a hole. You can just throw it in there. Eventually, they'll chew their own. So uh, that's the, for the hide that I use for them. And, I will hide some frozen carrots and that kind of thing. Sometimes in the substrate, you can give them little treats, you know, any of their little sunflower seeds, that kind of thing you can hide around in the substrate. But I did want to talk about this. I do use the pine, but I only use it for the grow-out bins. And what I mean by, by the grow-out bins, once they get to a certain age, you put them in a certain bin so they can grow to a certain size to where then you can either freeze them off um, or feed them off, whatever you do with them, it's up to you. But I'm just saying, you know, I do use the pine, but the re reason why I do it on the grow-outs and not the, the moms is, is it seems to be to me when I use the pine uh, with the colonies with the moms and the rats and well African software rats and the mice I'm not sure about Norway rats but with my situation the, the the babies their little feet get all red and sometimes they lose their little hair you know and they run around all half ball headed and that kind of thing it which it doesn't really seem to hurt much they grow they do the whole thing and they just kind of go out of it as they get older but it seems to be if I use this aspen it doesn't do that with the babies it, it, their feet don't get red and they just don't seem as irritated and it makes me feel better so I do use the pine for the grass because it seems like when they're older it doesn't bother their feet as much and then they're not red or anything and it doesn't seem to affect them so I do use it in the grow out bins for the mice and the rats but I but anything that's got a mom that's going to have babies in it I do use aspen for everything so this is kind of how I set my bins up you know you can throw a little piece of two by four in there or something or whatever for them to chew on and that kind of thing or whatever paper towel roll you can throw in there just kind of any little treat but this is kind of how I set up my tubs for my rodents I have a small operation this works for me I hope that these tips and tricks will work for you remember again the hay is really important any of this they chew on and all that it gives them their natural fiber that you know it's like 100% fiber for them it's just amazing so it's really healthy they use it for bedding they'll roll around in it they use it for nesting they just it's a 
all around just good to just throw in some hay. It's really cheap. It's and it's a good additive for the for the rats and mice for just their their living conditions. So this is how I set up my tubs. I hope this video helped you. Remember in the beginning about the live stream and the t-shirts. And until next time, take care and stay wild. These are some of my African sulfur rats. I usually do a one to three ratio as far as male and female. And I got a couple different size babies back there. So yeah, the little guys, that's why I get worried about it. I don't want their feet to be all pink or anything with the with the pine, but it, you can see little guys, their little feet aren't pink at all. And <laughs> so mama. I hang you down, buddy. Huh.